Hey everybody, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. 3D printing. It's still a fairly contentious topic in the hobby world. Despite becoming quite common over the last couple of years, it still sparks a lot of arguments. Oh, it's so easy. You just press a button and the computer makes it for you. There's no talent. It's too complicated and confusing and you need to be a rocket scientist and hazardous material specialist to do with it. It's too easy. It's too hard. Truth is somewhere in the middle. You would like the it's too easy people to be right. You wanna move the truth over to that area. With a few core fundamental things sorted out, you can get it pretty close. I've now been printing for a couple of years and I'm finally at that point. To get the process close to being just press a button and go, you need to lock in a few things. There's actually two core fundamental things that you need to get sorted out. And then printing is pretty easy and you can just enjoy it and get great results. The most important thing, a reliable printer with reliable resin and optimized settings for the printer and the resin. This can be very overwhelming because there are a lot of printers on the market and even more resins. And when you open up the settings for the printer to adjust to the resin, there's a lot of variables. When I first started printing, my first printer was this Anycubic Photon. And I gotta say, it was a dream to use. My experience was lovely, exactly what you would want it to be. I set it up and I was printing. The printer was reliable. The resin that I was using with it in combination was reliable. Unfortunately, the machine quickly became outdated in terms of the quality of print that it could make. At a certain point, it was like playing video games on a PS3. You gotta move on, you gotta upgrade. While the printer was reliable and giving me consistently successful prints, it wasn't really optimized, both in terms of exposures and supports. And that made post-processing the cleanup of supports really a pain in the ass. I gotta be honest, the, the, the support removal left a lot of scars and wounds and it wasn't ideal. At one point, I realized it was time to upgrade. And that's when I went with what at the time was Anycubic's newer, larger machine, the Mono X. It offered better resolution, a much larger print bed, and just generally a better printing experience. Also a lot faster. But this didn't go very well for me. I had a hard time with this machine. I spent weeks, maybe months of adjusting settings trying to get prints consistently successful and I consistently failed. I was getting like 40% success rate no matter what I did. This was partially due to the larger print bed, which makes it harder for prints to stick. I tried so many different resins, so many settings. I tapped into friends that had expertise and overall it was just not a great experience, which ended in me breaking the screen. The screen just cracked on me. Anycubic were very kind about it. And when I told them that had happened, they sent me a whole new unit. However, a lot of those same problems were still persistent in the replacement machine. I was getting a bit better results because I had some experience, but it still wasn't great. It was putting me at a point where I didn't want to print anymore. I was really frustrated and I started to align with the people whose argument was it's too difficult and not worth the hassle. And then I saw a lot of people using this machine by Frozen, the Mini 8K. And it offered superior resolution, more importantly from what I'd been told, a lot of reliability, a lot of success. So I got one. I used the 8K resin that was designed to be used with it. And the experience I had was phenomenal, like drastically different. I never had a serious failure on this machine, like just out of the box, it just worked, which was, crazy for me. I wasn't used to that. It was so exciting. And the prints were phenomenal. They were super detailed. The resin, most importantly, was really flexible and forgiving. It was great for minis. You know, I'd been used to really brittle miniatures when they were 3D printed, but now I was getting something that was very comparable to injection molded plastic in terms of durability. I was in love. <laughs> Really, it, it, it made the experience completely different. And it allowed me to experiment a lot with settings and understand how the settings actually affected the print. Even while I wildly changed them and got slightly different results, I was consistently getting successful prints. That was amazing. There was one downside though, a very small printing plate. 
equal to or maybe smaller than the Photon, probably about the same size. And that was a big limiting factor. So I was really excited when I saw they were about to release the Mighty 8K, which is essentially the same printer with a larger screen and print area. I was really excited, so I got one. I was hoping that it would be just as reliable as the Mini, but bigger. But I was worried after my experience with the Mono X that I would be in for a rough time. Unpacking it, it, it felt great. It felt high quality. Everything was really nice, lots of metal parts. It had some neat features on it, like a built-in webcam that you can set up and monitor your prints with from a device. I'm gonna be honest, I think that's kind of gimmicky and I'll likely never use it, but I'm sure it's gonna be handy for some folks. The only problem that I noticed during unpacking and setting up is that the included power cord was really short. It was actually too short to reach where I needed it to. Thankfully, it's just one of those generic cords that plug into a power supply and I just switched it for another one. Uh, it has a beautiful display big clear color and that was part of the reason leveling the machine was a breeze i leveled it on my first try no issues there was on-screen displays telling you how to do it it was great easiest printer i've ever leveled with the exception of the, the mini which was basically the same but for a larger printer i expected some trouble and i didn't have any so i printed out the included test print that comes with the machine and it printed beautifully nice sharp details great looked exactly the same as if i had printed it on the mini but the settings were quite slow. They were very conservative and I like to print fast. I also unfortunately realized that the build plate on the machine was too big to fit in the wash station that I was using. The Anycubic one, which I think is the biggest one you can buy right now. Uh, and that's unfortunate because washing on the plate is very convenient and an important part of my process, but it's something I'm willing to adjust to if the printer performs. Since the test print was good, I jumped onto filling up the build plate with some of my own models to test my own settings. I wanted to see if it could handle much more delicate models, and I wanted to see if I could push the speeds, the exposure times and the lift speeds and still get good results. The first try was not a total success. I had some adhesion failures. However, the models that did stick to the bed came out perfect. Thankfully, I was able to correct this easily by adjusting the settings for the bottom layers. And what was really nice is that I didn't have to go back to the computer and re-slice the files. I could adjust those settings internally on the printer and just get another one going right away. The second print with the uh, bottom layers adjusted was flawless, perfect, beautiful minis, 100%, great, I loved it. I knew my settings were dialed in. I should point out though that I use Lychee as a slicer and I noticed that the display screen on the printer went a little bit wacky when, when showing the, the models on the display. They said that was an issue with Lychee sliced things. Chi2 Box doesn't do that. They're working on fixing it. So I'm not worried about it. It's something they will fix and it's something that isn't affecting the print quality in the meantime. Next, I had to test the printer with some big ass pieces. I was always scared to be printing large prints with the Mono X, even though it's supposed to be capable of it. I just had so many failures. The hope was that this machine would solve that problem for me. I loaded up the bed with some large pieces from a giant Anubis model from Archvillain Games. This model is so big that it would actually take four print beds to do it, but all four prints loaded with large pieces came out perfect. Not a single noticeable flaw. And that brings me to the next crucial part of making your 3D printing experience a good one. Good optimized models with good supports. And you can get these types of models from companies like Archvillain Games, who have sponsored this video. Each month they release a set of incredibly high detailed themed models for tabletop gaming. The focus is really on villains and they don't hold back on epicness or size. The sets always include various sizes of models that go from 32 millimeters all the way up to just massive godlike sizes. They come with supplements to help you use them in your actual games. And it's all for a surprisingly low price. 10 bucks a month, that's it. That gets you all of the sweet models. And for 14 bucks a month, you get the models plus all of the great supplements for gaming. Now I'm about to talk about reliable sculpts and supports and how important they are. And Archvillain is a great example of that. Their models are covered in sharp details that translate really well when printed. And their pre-supported files make them easy to use. Drag and drop just like we want. 
This month, they are revisiting the Empire of Sands and are offering a wonderful selection of Egyptian-inspired gods and monsters. If you're watching this video because you want to start printing but are worried it's too hard, Arch Villain Models would be a perfect option for setting yourself up for success. I'll put a link in the description so you can check them out. Now let's dig into models and supports. Not all 3D models are created equal. There are so many model providers on the market now, so many sculptors that have moved on from video game sculpting into model sculpting. Being a skilled artist and even a good sculptor doesn't mean you're well suited for making miniatures to print. And not all of these sculptors and not all of these companies are offering models that are actually optimized for the technology. 3D printing opens up a lot of options that are difficult to achieve with traditional injection molded methods. You can print small complicated parts. There's no restrictions on the mold, but the sculptor has to be really knowledgeable of what they can take advantage of with the technology. They also have to know what the limiting factors are and how to avoid doing things that cause failure, both as a printer and also just as a painter, it takes an experienced sculptor to make a model that is optimized for a 3D printer and is realistic to paint and actually useful in a game. But that's not the whole picture. Even if you get perfect files, perfect sculpts that are fantastic for printing and playing and painting, they still need to be supported. And the support process is incredibly important on a printer. All of the best companies are providing models with pre-supported options, and they have gotten very good at it. It's not just about supporting things so they don't fail. It's also about supporting things in a way that are easy to remove without damaging the model. Now, the combination of slicing technology, experience from sculptors, and improvements in printing and in resin has made it so you can make printed models that have supports that are easy to get off, that don't leave any damage. And a little tip for you, if you are having trouble removing supports without them scarring or breaking off pieces of the model, or they leave little divots, that's probably because one, your exposure settings are too high and the resin is too hard, or you're trying to remove the supports after curing them. The best way to do it is print your model, take it off the build plate, clean it really well in your alcohol, then take the model with its support still on, dunk it in some hot water, and those supports should melt off like butter. After that, you can do some post curing if you need, but don't do it first. So you wanna look for model providers that have great sculpts that are dynamic and interesting and good for painting and playing and have good pre-supports files, and you can research this by looking into their communities to see what people are saying. You also wanna look for model providers that are giving you larger pieces, both in hollow and solid form. Printing big chunks of resin can be pretty wasteful. So any company worth their salt is gonna offer you the option of printing them hollowed out with some holes, so it can drain excess resin and you're not wasting as much of it. And another important thing that these companies have to get right is splitting up larger models in a way that go together well. The pieces in multi-part prints have to fit together nicely. Now the, the sculptor can slice them in such a way that you get good joints that don't make you know totally ugly seams that need to be filled. They can put them in smart locations. Some of this goes back to the responsibility of the printer, however, and, and the resin. The quality of the printer and the resin is gonna affect how much that those pieces shrink or expand or twist or warp. And if you get any variants, pieces are not gonna fit together well. That's another thing I love about the 8K resin from Frozen is that I have noticed that there's like never any shrinkage or warping and pieces always fit together really nicely. So that's it, really. It comes down to two things, a good printer with good resin and your settings dialed in and good models with good supports. Once you can sort that out, you can set it and forget it. Now, if you're just thinking about get, jumping into this or you're thinking about upgrading, I can absolutely 100% say that the Frozen Mini 8K is a fantastic place to start. I endorse it 100%. I would recommend it to anyone and everyone. It's fantastic. Only limitation is the small build plate. And in that case, I think the Mighty 8K is better. However, I've only been using that one for about a week, although I've printed a lot on it, like seven full plates, and I've been having a great time. I get the impression it's just as reliable and good as this one, but I haven't used it long enough to say for sure. I still think 
is a very safe purchase. I asked Frozen if they could hook my viewers up with a bit of a discount if they want to buy one. So I'll put that info below. Don't forget to check out Arch Villain Games. I want to thank them for sponsoring this and many other videos. They've been crucial to making this channel a success and also making me a successful printer. This is just some of the stuff I printed from them. So be sure to check them out, join up, get those sweet files. If you like this video, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments section below. I have an essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca where you can do your hobby shopping. And if you want to support me directly and help me keep making these videos, the best way you can do that is by joining the Black Magic Craft Fellowship on Patreon. That's it, everyone. Really hope you found this useful. Good luck. Happy printing. See you next time. All right, this looks good. It looks really good. I think we did it. Yeah, it looks like a success.